Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Honeybee Stamps. In today's video, we are going to play with inlay die cutting. We're going to combine it with an ink blended panel and a little twist to create this unique background. These are the products I'm going to use to create today's background. First is the Slimline Thin Frames die set. This is the perfect die for today's technique. I'll also be using the Square Spotlight Stencil and Mask set. I'm going to use mainly this large stencil for today's card. I'm going to start with a Slimline panel. A Slimline panel measures 3 and 5 eighths by 8 and 5 eighths. And I did cut this out of 110 pound white cardstock. I have the largest stencil from the Square Spotlight Stencils and Mask set. And I'm going to position it so that opening, that little corner opening is on the right side and then I'm going to ink blend that with seedless preserves to stress oxide. Once I finish that, I'll then pick up my stencil, rotate, rotate it till I have a clean corner, position it about a half an inch away, grab a couple pieces of painter's tape to hold that stencil in place, and then I'll grab one of the masks that are included in that set, position it over that little ink blended corner that I just, that I just created, and then ink blend my next distress oxide color which is blueprint sketch. Once I finish that I'll then remove the painter's tape and the mask and the stencil and then I will rotate my stencil around till I find another clean corner position it about a half inch away and then use my painter's tape once more to hold it down in place then I'll grab my mask place it over my previous ink blended corner and then ink blend my next color which is a salty ocean. So basically I'm working my way through a rainbow of distress oxide colors. I actually picked out nine I just finished Salty Ocean, so I'm moving on to my next color, which is Peacock Feathers. And I will quickly ink blend that little corner, and once I ink blend that, I'll remove the mask. And now my stencil is completely dirty. All four corners are dirty, so I placed my stencil down over a towel, then cleaned it with my damp chamois, and I'll make sure I thoroughly dry it and thoroughly clean it before I move on to my project again. So now that my stencil is ready and my mask is in place, I'm going to ink blend my next color in the rainbow here, which is mowed lawn. So position that and then ink blend it. Now that I've ink blended that, I'll remove it and I'll rotate to the other corner. For these areas now, my um, my sections are a lot bigger than before, so I'm only going to be able to get two ink blends and then I'll have to clean my mask. So now I'm going to stop here after I ink blended that squeeze lemonade and then clean my mask. After it's clean and thoroughly dry, I'll then move on to my next two colors in the rainbow. One tip, if you want to try to make sure you have no gaps in between your colors, make sure that the mask, when you place it down, you're actually a little bit short from completely covering that previously ink blended corner. That'll make sure that you, when your next color you ink blend will slightly overlap and that'll make sure you have no little gaps. So I've just finished my last color here, which is picked raspberry. You can see I had this beautiful kind of chevron rainbow and I'm now ready to die cut it with the Slimline Thin Frames die. I'll just flip it over and line it up with my panel and then I'll use a couple pieces of micropore tape to hold it in place and then I will run that through my die cutting machine. Now that I've run it through, I will remove the tape and what I will have left is this really thin frame our thin leftover piece of cardstock. I'm just going to put that aside and I'll keep all the remaining frames. Now that all my frames are cut, it's time to start the inlay process. But I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to rotate every other frame. So you can see I just did here with that second frame. Now I'm moving on to the third. I'm going to keep this with the colorful side down at the bottom. Now for the next frame, I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to rotate it all the way around so the colorful side is now at the top and then pop that in. So I'm going to repeat this process for every single frame, rotating every other one so that the colorful side is at the top. And this is going to create kind of uh, two of these chevron rainbows. So it's going to kind of stretch that ink blending that we did. And you're going to have this little separation by a white line from the area that we didn't ink blend, but your eye will kind of almost just connect the dots and fill it in and still make it look like that chevron look. So I'm almost done here, just a couple more to go. I'm checking every once in a while, making sure that the frames are still butted up against each other. I'm just doing this right on my work surface, so nothing's really holding them together except the frames in themselves just being nestled inside. And here's the last little piece here. Now I'm just going to do some fine tuning just to make sure everything is still butted up against each other. And then I'll grab a piece of painter's tape 
tape to hold them in place and I'll grab one more for the top and once I have all those frames in place I am now ready to adhere it onto a panel. So I went ahead and cut another panel of white cardstock. This is three and a half by eight and a half, a little bit smaller than a slimline uh, panel. That's because if you remember when we die cut this we had that little leftover thin frame that I put aside so this uh, panel is a little bit smaller and I just completely covered that panel with uh, tape and then just stuck these inlay die or inlaid frames right on top and then remove the painter's tape. Now the last thing I have to do is just stick this on to my card base. So I'm going to add some more tape to the back side and then just center this and put this on my slimline card base front. And once I have that stuck, we're now ready for our sentiment. I'm going to start our sentiment by stamping some sub sentiments. I have the birthday stamp set here and I'm going to heat emboss them in white on some gray cardstock. So I put down some anti-static powder, stamped them in Versamark ink. Now I'm dipping them into white embossing powder and then I'll just heat set with my heat tool. Now that I've got them stamped, I went ahead and trimmed them with my paper trimmer. So they're little strips. And now we're going to move on to our well, our word die for the sentiment. I started with the birthday honey cuts die set here, and I die cut three birthdays out of white cardstock. And now I'm going to stack two together with some liquid glue, and then I'm going to move on to my third die cut, and I'm going to adhere it on to a shadow layer that I die cut out of vellum. So again, I'm going to use my liquid glue, add some liquid glue to the back side, and then stick that down. And I'm not going to, I'm also going to do a little dab of glue for the little dot for the eye, stick that down. And now I'm ready to kind of put these two together. I'm going to add some liquid glue to my stacked birthday. Just add that glue right on top. Use my finger to pick up any excess and then top them off with my vellum and my cardstock birthday. And that those two stacked birthdays underneath will add a little lift to that vellum and we'll just make this kind of pop away from the background which is a little bit on the busy side but it'll still help that or that little vellum and that lift will help it to kind of stand out. So I also stacked up two little strips of white cardstock and added those to the back side of my sub sentiments. And now I'm ready to kind of adhere everything to the card. I'm going to start with the birthday, just kind of place that on the left side of the card. And then I'll finish up with my two sub sentiments here, just a little bit of glue on the back and then stick those on. And that will complete the card. And I'll hold it to the camera so you can get a good look at this crazy rainbow background. This card was so fun to create and I just love this rotated inlay die cutting technique. I think it's so cool and it's always a bit of a surprise of what you're going to get in the end. And I just can't wait to continue to play with it and make some more cards. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If you'd like any more information on the products I use, please head over to Honeybee. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.